Well, we've already had some scattered rainfall across the region today, and it looks like there will be some more of it this afternoon through this evening. Storms will bring some gusty wind as well as some lightning. No severe weather threat today, and look for the rain, rain to dissipate as we head through the overnight hours, but we are going to see some pop-up showers and storms again for your Friday, and we could have one or two strong storms tomorrow. I'll have the latest on that a little bit later in the show. That's a check of your Todd Shores from McClarty Ford forecast first. Local midday begins right now. Now, from your community, local news that matters. This is NBC6 News Local Midday Update. Louisiana's stay-at-home order expires tomorrow, thus beginning phase one of the reopening of the state. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on NBC6 Local Midday Update. I'm Fernanda Hernandez. We take a look now at the most updated coronavirus numbers here in the Pelican State. The total number of cases is now over 33,000. That's 827 new cases. That death toll is now standing at 1,193. Caddo Parish claiming over 1,800 of those cases and 144 deaths, according to the coroner's office. Now, we don't want you to be alarmed by those numbers. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards assures us that those numbers are so high because they include mass results from one lab dating back to March. He says the real number of cases is much lower. 609 of those 827 cases actually came from that one lab. So if you, if you take and, and look inside the numbers, uh, the, the real number of new cases uh, is 218. That's really in line uh, with where we've been over the last uh, several days. And Governor John Bellowers is expected to sign the proclamation for the state to enter phase one today. And in the meantime, he urges everyone to continue following safety guidelines. The bottom line is that we want the best guidance possible, uh, obviously not the quickest, uh, and all the guidance will be finalized before I sign the order tomorrow. And Governor Edwards says that the state fire marshal and health department will provide more guidance in the coming days. He insists they're keeping worker safety in mind. And Streetport City le leaders are also preparing for the first step in our community's recovery. NBC6's Jenna Jordan shares how this transition will impact the people who live and work here. The last thing that we need or anyone wants is to see a spike in cases and hospitalizations during phase one that forces us to close down and go backwards. Shreveport Mayor Adrian Perkins encourages people to continue to be cautious in the face of the coronavirus. COVID-19 is a deadly and highly infectious disease and currently there is no treatment or vaccine. Because of that, when Government Plaza reopens Friday, everyone who enters will be asked to wear a mask and barriers are being installed to help protect employees from the public. It hasn't been an uptick in our area. We're still seeing the rate of uh, spread slow down, but that is only because our citizens remain diligent and we're uh, protecting ourselves. Health officials say local hospitals are prepared for this next phase and are closely monitoring the number of cases in our area. At this time, hospital beds and ventilators are available. Wash your hands, uh, be careful, take care of yourself, so the hospitals don't have to take care of you. City leaders acknowledge it will take some adjusting to get used to this new way of life. Think of them not as restrictions necessarily or them hampering your life, but think of them as acts of kindness. And today, Shreveport City Council is expected to hold a special meeting to fill the position of interim representative for District A. Fourteen candidates applied after previous councilman Willie Bradford retired. Today's virtual meeting begins at 2 p.m. And also today, the Louisiana Department of Health will hold a Teletown Hall to provide COVID-19 response information to shreveport Bossier residents. The LDH, along with the Louisiana Public Health Institute, will hold the meeting through GoToMeeting.com. And that meeting started at 11 a.m. We'll have an update on that town hall at 5 p.m. tonight. And meanwhile, all of the museums, historic sites, and most of the state parks will reopen this weekend. However, three state parks are housing people who may have tested positive for coronavirus. These people are not able to go home for risk of exposing others. So each of the parks, including Lake Bissano, have people staying in them. Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser says that those parks will remain closed for now. There are three state parks. Chico State Park in Ville Plaque, Lake Bissonneau, between Shreveport and Ruston, and Bayou Signet on the West Bank, that the team is still using to house people that are uh, 
symptomatic, and uh, and we're going to keep those uh, places closed until we can work out a plan. And we are working on a plan to get portions of those parks back open as soon as possible. And all 18 state historic sites and all nine state museum buildings will open on a Friday, but only to Louisiana residents. Headed over to Arkansas now, the most updated numbers have been released. There are now 4,236 cases of coronavirus. There have been 97 reported deaths. Governor Hutchinson will be given a COVID-19 update at 1.30 p.m. this afternoon. Of course, you can watch that briefing live on our website, arclitexhomepage.com. And yesterday, Governor Asa Hutchinson announced 72 new cases of the novel coronavirus in Arkansas. He shared a map yesterday which shows where those active cases are located by county in the state. Now, the map does not provide a specific number for each county, but it does show Washington County and Bend County in northwest Arkansas, currently between 10 to 29 active cases. The county with the most active cases is St. Francis in eastern Arkansas, where the Forest City Federal Prison is located. And the second hardest hit county is also the state's most populous, that's Pulaski County. And in Hope, Arkansas, a new relief fund has been created to help those hardest hit by the coronavirus pandemic. The campaign was recently developed by local nonprofit Hope in Action. Organizers say about $10,000 have been raised so far, and they hope to raise more through a virtual concert on May 21st. The fund aims to help workers affected by the pandemic with utilities, rent, or transportation-related costs. Typically, the open action pays directly to the vendor or the utility or the landlord that's involved. Barbers, our hairstylists, people like that that have been affected that can't offer those services and they're getting back into it but could still use a little help, it would be nice to consider helping them. Registration for the program opens next Friday. And over in Texas, here's a look at the new coronavirus numbers there. There are now over 42,000 cases statewide, 1,158 deaths so far. More than 587,000 people have been tested for the virus, and more than 23,000 have recovered. And Community Matters and Brookshire's is now accepting EBT SNAP payments on curbside online ordering. This at Brookshire's and Super One Foods in Texas and Louisiana locations. Customers may order, pay, and schedule pickup times at the store using the Brookshire's or Super One Foods website and mobile apps. Now, customers paying with EBT SNAP benefits will need to specify EBT at pickup in, that, in the order instructions and then put a credit card in at checkout. When you arrive for pickup, you you will swipe your EBT card to complete your order. And in the wake of the current COVID-19 pandemic, the 10th annual Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl Youth Football Clinic, originally scheduled for Saturday, June 6th, June 6th has been postponed to a later date. That date of the free youth clinic that is open to youth from ages 5 through incoming 8th grade is to be determined and will be announced at a later date. Pre-registration for that clinic is now closed and will reopen also at a later date. And meanwhile, the Veterans Administration has provided much needed additional funding to assist veterans during this COVID-19 pandemic. Volunteers of America was recently awarded a statewide three-month $1.1 million grant for its Supportive Services for Veterans Families program. This to provide support to qualified veterans who are in need of temporary financial assistance in order to pay their rent and utility payments because of COVID-19. And Barksdale Air Force Base will reopen its commissary to retirees this weekend. The commissary and base exchange will open Saturday, May 16th, and retiree access will be limited to the weekends. As with active duty, access to these facilities will be capped at 25% of a maximum occupancy, and everyone will be required to wear face masks. The full policy on changes to the commander's installation policy guidance will be released Friday, May 15th. And Memorial Shree Memorial Libraries are opening back up in phase one of Louisiana's reopening. They're offering curbside pickup where people can request materials, books, CDs, and movies to pick up at designated parking spaces outside of the library. You can find participating locations on our website at arclitexhomepage.com. 
And only on 6, you asked and we listened. You can now find your latest coronavirus updates in Espanol on our website. This update gives you the latest on COVID-19 here locally and what's going on in your area as it relates to the coronavirus. I will be bringing you this update completely in Spanish and you can expect updates on our website every Tuesday and Thursday. That's going to be arclatexhomepage.com. And as always, the Keep Calm Through COVID hotline is providing a 24-7 counseling service for those who may be feeling overwhelmed, anxious, or need help coping with COVID-19 related stress. This service is available to the public at no charge, and that number is on your screen. Stay with us. We got some rain today, and Josh is telling us if we're going to get more uh, later on in your full check of your forecast. And coming up next, we're giving you a reason to wear a mask by telling you how long the virus can linger in the air. And later we'll tell you how you can get some free french fries. Stay with us. That's later in the show. And now, your weather authority, Josh Marsis, certified the most accurate forecast in the Arklatex. Well, welcome back. Definitely looking at a warm and humid afternoon, and it is the heating of the day today, which is driving some of this rain and thunderstorm activity. We do have the sea breeze kicking in along the Gulf as well, which is helping to push some of the rain into the region. So if you haven't seen any rain yet today, we will likely see it pop up very close to you this afternoon. So make sure you have an umbrella for any plans this evening. And due to the heating kind of driving these thunderstorms, once we hit sunset tonight, we'll see most of this activity come to an end. Lows tonight rather warm again as we'll be close to 70 degrees. So here's your Robin Stood at Futurecast. It does show the rain kind of lifting to the north here as we go through the afternoon hours. I'm thinking it will be fairly widespread as we have a fairly strong sea breeze across the region today. You'll see that lull in activity tonight. So we are looking at another mostly cloudy and warm night. Very humid as well tonight. And for tomorrow, we could be looking at some scattered showers and storms during the morning. But more likely, we'll see a few storms roll in during the afternoon. You'll see those storms tomorrow rather than coming up from the coastline. Those will be moving in north to south across the region. So tomorrow afternoon, definitely see some rain in Texarkana. May see the storms down into Shreveport uh, closer to the evening hours and potentially into Friday night, early Saturday morning. On the lookout for some of these storms tomorrow, we are in the low end severe weather outlook. Just a marginal risk out here. And that's just about all of our counties and parishes. The thinking here is that we can see one or two strong storms, mainly capable of some high wind gusts, kind of a lower threat for hail. But it looks like a few of these storms could bring some high wind to the region on 
Friday. As far as the weekend, we don't have much of a severe weather threat this weekend, uh, but we do have a very slow moving area of low pressure that will start to make its way in. And just due to the slow movement of this, that's why we're expecting the rain will be over us for much of the weekend. We'll come through in a few different waves, so there may be some dry periods this weekend, but it looks like the heaviest rain will fall kind of late Saturday into early Sunday. If there's a bit of good news with the forecast today, it's that this area of low pressure will start to scoot through a little quicker than anticipated. So yesterday we had rain chances sticking around through the middle of next week. It looks more likely that we'll see the rain come to an end now some point late Sunday into early Monday. So we should have some sunshine to help dry us out early next week. A look at your rainfall totals could see some two to four inch accumulation south of I-20. Uh, due to the rain falling to the south of us, we likely won't see any rises on our lakes and rivers, but we could see some roadway flooding, especially late Saturday. So that's one thing we'll be watching for you as we continue through the next few days. Seven day forecast, warm temperatures through the weekend despite the rain as we'll run in the 70s and 80s. North wind returns with sunshine next week, so the north wind will push the humidity out of here. It will be warm. I think it'll feel quite nice with highs in the mid 80s for the middle of next week. That's a check of your weather forecast. Let's send it back over to Fernanda. Thank you, Josh. And health matters. And with the governor's stay-at-home order set to expire tomorrow, many local restaurants and fitness centers are gearing back up to reopen. Plex Fitness is making some changes to how they will run the gym in order to follow those social distancing and occupancy guidelines. They're moving all equipment six feet apart, and all staff will be dressed in PPE. The gym has been open for 37 years, and they say it's never been so empty. So they're excited to reopen tomorrow. Plex Fitness has over 1,000 active members and they will reopen at 25% capacity, which means only 90 people can be inside the 90,000 square foot gym at a time. And new research indicates the coronavirus could remain in the air for more than eight minutes after talking. This study found that talking loudly for one minute in a confined space could generate at least 1,000 speech droplets. And if someone were to inhale them well, it could potentially trigger new infections. Researchers tested this by having a person repeat the phrase, stay healthy, in a closed air environment. They then observed how long it took those large droplets to shrink, and as a person evaporated and hung in the air. An antibody, it's a word we're hearing a lot lately, but how does it help our bodies fight viruses like the coronavirus? Mandy Gaither has more in today's Health Minute. Antibodies are proteins in the blood that attach themselves to viruses, limiting infection and alerting white blood cells to come in to attack and eliminate the virus. In many cases, if the body encounters the same virus again, the immune system has leftover antibodies that remember the previous infection. These cells can either fight off the virus directly or produce even more antibodies to help prevent the infection. Dr. Sanjay Gupta says research aren't entirely sure why this process works so well for some viruses and not others. There are some viruses that our immune systems seem to easily forget. Immunity may be short-lived after encounters with some common seasonal coronaviruses which can cause the common cold. That could explain why we repeatedly get sick with something as simple as a cold and some viruses like the flu mutate frequently, which means our old antibodies no longer work against new strains. While most experts do believe that we're probably going to have some protection after being infected with the coronavirus, we're still not sure just how long that protection will be or how strong. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Well, stay with us with food prices surging in grocery stores. One company says it's cutting its prices. We're going to tell you who and for how long coming up next.
News Local Midday Update. Welcome back in your consumer news. Tyson Food says it's cutting prices on some of its meat products, but it's only for the rest of this week. From now until Saturday, the company says it will discount its meats by 20 to 30 percent. That's including chuck and round roast as well as some ground beef products. Now, the discount comes as reports show prices at grocery stores across the U.S. are rising. The cost of groceries overall increased by more than a two and a half percent just last month. Meanwhile, Twitter says it will let some of its staff continue working from home forever if they want to. That's as long as their role and situation enables them to work from home. This decision reflects how some measures implemented in response to the coronavirus pandemic could lead to a new normal for corporate America. This even after the immediate health crisis passes. Twitter said the experience of working from home for the past few months has shown it can work at scale. The social media company does not expect to open most of its offices or support business travel before September. And McDonald's fans, the fast food chain is throwing in some extra fries. If you can make a purchase on Fridays, it's free fries on Friday deal and it's going to run unth until June 28th. To get the free treat, you have to make at least a $1 purchase through the McDonald's app. And this deal involves medium-sized fries, one order per customer, and it's available only at participating McDonald's locations. And stay with us. We have your feel good stories of the day coming up net next and includes some recipes and hugs from grandma. But first, we're taking a look outside with our Louisiana Tower Cam. Josh has one final look at the weather coming up next. This is NBC6 News Local Midday Update. Welcome back. We couldn't wrap up today's show without some feel good news. And it's been said love knows no bounds. And one Illinois family proves that to be very true. With a little bit of ingenuity and some plastic, an 85 year old great grandma can now hug her loved ones for the first time in months. Shannon Kelly has that story. I wanted to cry because I couldn't believe. <laughs> that this was happening. Rose Gagnon hasn't hugged her great-grandchildren in more than two months. I see them every day normally, so this was kind of a, a challenge not to be able to see them, not to be able to hug them. Until now. What did it feel like to be able to hold them again? Oh, my heart felt like it was going to burst. Yeah, yeah, it, it filled my heart. This is a group hug. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Rose's granddaughter, Carly Marinero, built a hug time device, allowing her kids to safely wrap up in their great-grandmother's embrace. I was getting sort of to the point of, oh my gosh, I just can't handle this. I just need to hug her. The kids need to hug her. So it was just 
so worth it. <laughs> I love you. I love you. So the frame is just PVC pipe. The plastic is a window insulator kit for a sliding glass door. So double-sided tape and duct tape. All you have to do is put your arms through these holes so you can spread the love without spreading the germs. We're not meant to be apart like this or be isolated. And it's, it's sad for those people that can't be around their family members. I'm just glad we could share this kind of happiness with people. Even though there may be a piece of plastic between these hugs, this family proves nothing can come between a great grandmother's love for her babies. Well, here's the final check of your forecast. Again, expect rain to stick around through the afternoon and early evening. Scattered in nature, some areas may get missed today, but eventually the rain will find you either tomorrow or this weekend as we do have a rainy pattern setting up for the next four days or so. It looks like the heaviest rain will be late Saturday into early Sunday. Again, tomorrow, one or two of these storms could bring some high winds, so we'll keep you updated on that at darkletexhomepage.com. It's a check of your weather. Thank you, Josh, and that wraps up your local midday update. Have your umbrella handy and have a terrific Thursday. We're going to see you tomorrow. NBC6, your weather authority, awarded the Weather Rate Seal, certified as the most accurate forecast in the Arklatex.